Hello and welcome everyone to another InventRight webinar. We have an incredible guest for you tonight. Um, Steven's out, he's he's busy, but I so I get Jason all to myself here and you guys too. It's like you're really gonna enjoy him tonight. Fred and Friends is is a is a very cool, very unique company, and and Jason tonight is going to show you some of the products. And um, even if you're not in this space, I think you're just going to enjoy this webinar to death. I think you're going to really, really love it. So uh, Jason Amendolara is is our guest tonight. He's the president of Fred and Friends. They have some functional, fun products, is I guess the way I would put it. And um, he's just going to, we're going to cover a lot of things. We're going to cover um, how to take a look at their product line and submit them the right products. If you want to submit them a product, you're going to get to understand um, the space that they're in. I'll let, I'll let Jason, um, you know, I was tempted, Jason, to, to, to refer to you as Fred because it's Fred and friends. And then, no, wait, it's Jason. Uh, yep. Do people do that to you ever? Do they ever call you Fred? uh no there was a friend he, <laughs> he has since retired um but yeah he he's uh you know he was around and and uh you know but he's 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 since gone but no i'm i'm definitely not fred so. yeah you're definitely not fred okay yeah. but, but um go ahead no i just wanted to you know say say hello thanks for having me on again this is the the second time uh i've been on and i apologize that uh Everybody doesn't have something better to do on a Thursday afternoon or night than listen to me. But um, oh, I, I think they're gonna. You're you're always fantastic, and um, I think we people that don't know your company once they get to know your company by coming on one of these webinars, they I think they love your company and they start talking about you and 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 your company and all your fun products and so. Um, thank you so much for coming. I know it's like eight o'clock your time, so thank you for coming on. That's all right. You're we're half hour past my bedtime, but we're 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 good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, so you got you got some slides, some products you you want to show, and maybe we can jump on the website. I think they're pretty loose. I just want to, before we get going with Jason, I just want to let everybody know that you can type your questions into the questions box at any time. We'll try to get to them at the end. If I see one that happens to be really on topic, we might do it during probably wait to the end but I want to the problem is everybody types up at the end and then it's too late then it's over so if you got something that's really important to you um, type it in we can't get to them all but type them into the questions box so go ahead Jason great um, well you know if if anybody has listened to me uh, before you know again I apologize this 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 presentation has been recycled over the years um, but uh, this it'll give us a kind of a quick overview of um, what we've been doing over the last uh, 16 years and, um, you know, give you a, an idea of the brand and hopefully um, kind of hone in on, you know, what we're looking for, for, for uh, um, idea submissions and, you know, hopefully it's a little inspiring, um, but uh, we'll see. So, um, you know, Jason, how do, how do you before, we, before we get going, speak. Yeah, just say next. Uh, just you don't have to be polite. Just say next when you want me to change the next slide. But before we get going, speaking of the brand, so the, the brand is Fred and Friends, but your website is genuinefred.com. And yes. that's what you have up here. Can you talk? Uh, I never asked you about that when we were talking yesterday. Um, yeah. Why, why Genuine Fred? Well, the brand is Fred. Um, our the company is Fred and Friends, and that came about because when we started in 2004, actually 2005, we started bringing in um, some European brands, uh, and we were we were their uh, U.S. distributors. So that's where the Friends kind of came in. Um, but you know, our product line is Fred, and that's pretty much what you know the industry knows us as. But you know, as uh, our wholesale business is Fred and Friends, so um, you know, genuine Fred is is something that we put in all of our packaging. Um, you know, we're we're known. Um, you know, we we try to be known as a as a company that's um, you know wholly original. We you know take pride in in um, you know being uh, you know a company that opens opens molds freely. We have our own standalone design studio. And we work um, closely with a lot of outside uh, designers and inventors. Um, we uh, and I, I can go into that as as we go, but you know the the differentiation between the Fred and and Fred and Friends is uh, something that was causing a little bit of confusion. So 
Um, Fred is the brand and Fred and Friends is the wholesale business. Got it, got it. But I like the genuine. You, you guys do quality stuff. And so for some reason, I associate the word genuine with quality in some ways. We hope, yeah. We, we, yeah. we take it seriously. So, you know, just to backing up before, before the Fred thing, um, I personally have been doing this for 24 years. Uh, started, you know, Club Earth was a brand of the, the, the company Easy Aces, which, you know, then became... Uh, became uh, Fred and Friends. So, you know, you can go to go to the Club Earth slide, the next slide. Okay. So Club Earth was, we were toy designers by trade and this was um, just a, a smattering of, of items um, that were, you know, they were all based in uh, nature themed uh, toys and we would, you know, kind of take uh, traditional play value, you know, you, you can, probably remember the, you know, the building clowns and, you know, the wheelos and, you know, we, we just did uh, animal themed spins on, on things. Uh, next, they, you know, hand puppets and you can go to the next one too. You know, wind ups and things that had traditional play value and we would, you know, we would put a science and nature, you know, bend on them and we did everything with, probably two or three designers uh, in house. And, you know, at the time we couldn't, you know, produce nearly what we can do today with 3D printers and everything. And everything was, was you know, this is before 3D software and everything was done by hand. So, um, you know, you, you, you get to, uh, to learn real quick on, on uh, you know, how, to, how to develop products, you know, from the inside out. But the, the market started, um, started changing very quickly uh, in 2004 when you know, all the zoos and aquariums and you know nature companies and natural wonders that we sold to started going away with the i would say first recession um you know the dot-com boom kind of uh, forced a lot of these people out of business so we quickly had to change gears and look to see where we could uh, you know create a new business um, you know, using the same bones that we had. Um, so uh, next slide. We looked to, uh, you know, European brands like Alessi and felt that we could do something fun uh, that was missing in the U.S. market for, you know, toy-based or playful, uh, you know, novelty house, um, home and kitchen uh, utensils. Next. We, you know, we, we talk about the term novelty. Um, this is what, you know, I picture uh, as, as novelty and something that we uh, purposefully uh, stayed away from um, when we were coming up with, you know, what, what were the, you know, initial Fred uh, items that we came out with and decided that, you know, from a very early stage that um, the things that were fun but didn't have that secondary purpose, um, you know, customers would see them on store shelves and they'd get a laugh and, you know, probably take a picture and send to your friends, but you weren't compelled to buy it. Um, and, you know, we learned real quick that, you know, these were the things that uh, could easily be passed up uh, at, at, uh, at retail. And we wanted to do something that, that definitely had a little bit more um, staying power um, something that you know wouldn't just be put in the you know the top drawer and uh, forgotten about. Um, so having that that secondary function was was pretty much key to anything that we were doing going forward. Jason, I, I don't know if I agree with you. I think the electric yodeling pickle. I think that could be in every Walmart in the world. It, I, it, yeah, I, I it, really don't agree with you there, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, somebody's made a made a killing off of the yodeling pickle, but what not us. <laughs> All right, so uh, you know this is this is pretty much the you know the, the ethos of the of the brand. You know, we we decided early on that we wanted to do well-designed items, um, you know, that had a function or solved the problem. Um, but you know, again, being toy designers, we wanted to have fun and um, and you know, kind of the the anti LSE model was you know we we determined that that twenty dollar price point the sub twenty dollar price point was was key for us so uh you know with 
clever sourcing and you know partnerships uh, with our vendors, we were able to bring products to market that uh, were well made. Um, you know, we focused on you know high quality uh, materials, um, you know testing, and uh, and you know we we brought out a a line of of, of items you know first time in, in 2004. Next, the um, the early focus uh, was on kitchen tools. Um, most of them were kitchen tools, and uh, again, it was that that marriage of of function and uh, and play value or whimsy. Um, and these were, you know, as we did with the toys, they were they it was the the function that people already knew. So we were uh, we were making let's say scrub brushes that you know. People were already buying. It was a it was a necessity, but we decided to do our own fun twist on it, and hopefully, you know, uh, entice people to buy one that you could blow bubbles with while you're watching washing dishes, rather than you know the the standard uh, uh, you know boring scrub brushes. Okay. Um, these are these are you know kitchen spoons, and you know we played with um, you know people's uh, nostalgic uh, feelings, you know, banging on on uh, on your mom's pots and pans as a kid. Um, so, you know, again, these were slight, slight twists in concept, um, but they had a lot of, they resonated with people because, you know, they, they played with, uh, you know, your, your nostalgic feelings, you know, they were, they were fun. And uh, again, they're well-made. Um, this was one that we licensed from a designer early on, and it's still on the line. Um, so, you know, that's that's something to be said about, you know, the relationships we've had with uh, designers. And, you know, you could have a hit uh, early on and, you know, could have a, a really long tail um, when it comes to uh, you know, the longevity of the, the product in the line. We, we try to pick items that have, uh, or ideas that have, um, you know, we, we do work in trends, but we're not, um, you know, flash in the pan, you know, in and out. We, we like to try to pick ideas that have uh, have some tooth to them and, and longevity. I like the rocking end, cooking end. Yeah. On the blue yeah. on the packaging, that's fun. Yeah. All right, next one. Um, for the most part, uh, these, the items that we were doing early on were, um, you know, they were, pretty low cost items, you know, when we were just putting little twists on them, um, you know, so we sourced uh, products that, uh, you know, that we could, we could buy inexpensively. Um, in a lot of cases, we were teaching vendors to do things that weren't in their, you know, their comfort zone. Um, so we, we would challenge them and it was, you know, it was, it was definitely hard to find those vendors that were willing to, um, you know, change gears in a lot of ways to, uh, you know, to do what we needed. Um, this one's pretty simple, but um, you know the the a, a simple twist in concept makes a very cheap commodity product into something that is uh, you know it's got it's got more um, you know perceived value we'll say um, and uh, makes it you know a set of crappy dish gloves a, a gift um, you know rather than you know something that you would you know you, you know buy for yourself as a necessity. Next one. <laughs> we like working with familiar icons. Um, this is a cheese board, obviously, uh, in the shape of a giant mousetrap. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of you know, design work went into this. It's, it's, uh, you know, it between the the wood burning and the you know the the metal turning and everything uh, wasn't the easiest thing to get get done right. But um, it's uh, it's it's a fun item. Um, with everything that we do, um, we like the element of surprise. So, you know, we play with the scale of an item, um, twists and functionality. And, um, you know, it, most importantly, we, we, we try to make things that are, that are gifts and, uh, you know, having, you know, give this to a, to, to somebody who's having a house party and they put it out on the table and, you know, the, the, the host is is you know the the party hero so to speak um, because they have a you know a statement piece on their on their you know um, party table and you know people are talking about it and sharing it and that's that's a big part of what we do. 
Jason, can you talk about pricing for a second? You said you like to keep it, uh, you know, at a decent price. But these don't these look like nice products when you see the wood burning on there. This does not look like a cheap product. This is not what people would see with the musical talking pickle or whatever. Yeah. Um it, there's some quality here. I mean it might not be like the highest highest Mercedes Benz BMW quality, but but there's some really good quality here. It looks yeah. like I don't well, thanks for noticing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What, what do you guys, is that, what are your feelings on that? And how how do you find a, when you make something, you're, okay, that's too much. People won't pay that, but let's keep a certain quality level. Where where do you see your, your products at? Um, well, the, the, you know, the, the, like, like we said, the sub $20 was the sweet spot, you know, that's changed over the last, uh, you know, 15 years. Um, you know, so, you know, things have, have crept up a little bit, but, you know, 20, 20, $25, um, you know, it's, it's definitely when you, when you had that physical $20 bill, that was the, um, that was kind of the kicker, you know, you didn't want to, you didn't want to break anything bigger than a 20 and you were, you know, now with, with digital payment, you know, everything's kind of changed, but, um, you know, that was kind of our thinking that, you know, you could, you could, you didn't think, customer didn't think twice about spending you know, the $20. Um, I think this might be $22 uh, off the top of my head, but it, you know, it's, it's not much more than that. And, um, you know, we, you would deal with an item as, you know, on a, on a uh, individual basis, um, you know, try to shave price where you could, maybe the thickness of the wood, uh, you know, needed to be reduced a little bit. Um, we, we just, we try to do it smart where, you know, you weren't, you weren't sacrificing quality or safety, um, but you were, you know, getting what you needed. Uh, and, you know, we're, you know, designers and, you know, the, some of the pickiest in the bunch where, um, you know, you, you'd want to feel good about what you're putting out and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to sacrifice that. So, you know, I learned quickly as the designer for Fred, who was, you know, running the business you know, he taught me basically that, you know, you got to make some sacrifices to, to actually get something made. And, you know, you can't hold on to, uh, you, you can't hold on to the highest standards. Um, but, you know, we butted heads uh, over it. And, you know, I think we, we met somewhere in the middle and, you know, I learned a lot from the process and, you know, taking it forward um, you know, for, for future product projects. But that's cool. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The, um, so, in, you know, going through these, we're you know, talking about, you know, some of the, the criteria that we look for in ideas and what made uh, us choose them, you know, at, in, in, you know, for the product line. So, you know, when we talk about surprises, um, you know, the, it could be um, a surprise in the, in the material that we're using. So, you know, this is a, obviously supposed to look like a pink pearl eraser that's done in, uh, in stainless steel. Um, we do a lot of glass items that you know are, are have that high-end feel um that uh you know look like ziploc bags and you know it's that it's that taking something and kind of turning it on its head um whether it be the theme or the material uh, or the function that we're that we're dealing with next another surprise is context um you know this is obviously made to look like a you know a, a children's uh, tire swing but it's it's a bird feeder so you know seeing your birds on it and you know the the occasional squirrel hanging from it is is pretty darn funny when when it's hanging in you know off your tree um so again those those things that are reminiscent of childhood fun and play um you know just putting them in a different context uh creates you know, a whole bunch of opportunities for us when designing products. Next, here would be another example. This is this is a doorstop um, made out of silicone. So, you know, if anybody has cats, you know, you, that that um, that very familiar, you know, cat paw peeking out under the door uh, is 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 pretty darn cute. So we uh, this was this was a, a license from. Uh, Somebody who might even be uh, on this call tonight. So if she's uh, if she's on, you know, this is this is for her. Um, so yeah, this is um, this would be an example of you know fun plays on on context. 
So the the paw is just tapered to act like a doorstop there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a ru is it like a rubbery thing. Yep. Uh, Silicone. Okay. Yep. The pads are actually uh, you know painted pink on underneath, um, so you can you can use it in both directions. When she submitted to you, did she say, okay, it'll be this material and it's going to be tapered like this? And I mean, that's nope. not a lot. Of, no, she didn't even do that. Wow. It, you know the the. In a lot of cases, um, you know, they're they're just sketches, um, and that's you know, it's a good good thing to talk about. Is you know, we don't require um, really flushed out designs. You know, if it's if it's something that um, you know the designer is capable to to feed us 3D files of something, um, that's great. But usually, we do most, if not all, the heavy lifting on you know product development. Um, so you know we basically licensed the concept and we did drawings for it you know made mo uh, you know these were hand models at the time probably clay or wax um and uh and you know do all the packaging and you know we we like to involve designers as much as they want to be involved um you know we we like the, the you know the whole collaborative process um, but it's not necessary. We can we can take something that's that's pretty raw and turn it into a product. Cool. So uh, another example oh. of text. Yeah. So you know we <laughs> like having fun uh, at children's expense uh, sometimes. And you know it's this is uh, this is a baby bottle obviously um, that uh, that looks like a beer bottle. And you know that that uh, making your child look uh, Look funny, um, you know, in public is is uh, it, you know it's it's kind of fun to us. So um, you can go to the next one. Another example of <laughs> kids' items that uh, you know it, it's a it's a great vehicle for you know fun concepts. Um, you know this is this was one that isn't in the line anymore, and unfortunately it's because of uh, you know. We couldn't we couldn't pass uh, testing BPA testing on the little the little knob, so we're trying to resource it with a different factory. But you know we we take we take uh, you know testing extremely seriously, and you know do not want to put products out that you know could harm or or jeopardize uh, you know somebody's somebody's health. So um, this is uh, this is one that's unfortunately not in line at the moment. Seeing a theme here, these products are functional. I mean, this is still a pacifier. The drumsticks are still for stirring things, and you know, the the this is still a baby bottle. Yep. And they're all yep. we're. I, I'm hope I'm certain everybody else is seeing the same theme. But yeah, yeah. and you know, this this is an, another early one that was uh, you know pretty simple. They're paper cups, but they're you know. The, the the idea here is that these are these are things that bring people together um, a big concept or a major concept in our, our line is um, interactivity and, and shareability um, so these are things that you know you you hold up to your nose and you obviously can't see it but everybody else that's around uh, you know gets a gets a good laugh um, so you know the social, the idea of a product being a social expression is uh, is a big part of of, of the ethos. Yeah, Jason, you know what I love about these products? I think any any inventor on the line, I don't care if they're an engineer or if they're a plumber or if whatever they're doing, these are things that anybody could invent. I mean, not Absolutely. everybody has that sense of humor, but if they wanted to, they could. It doesn't require any sort of extreme skill set except for creativity. No, you're absolutely right, and it's it's something that you know it just is a a version of the you know this is Jack Black uh, you know sharing this uh, you know with I think this was probably in People magazine. Um, so yes, the the idea of um, you know being able to to do any of this is you're absolutely right. There's uh, there's there's a, there's very little barrier to ent entry you know with our types of products. Um, it's it's that clever combination of functionality and fun and you know the um, you know and and theme. So Dar Darcy wrote in, I love these cups. I bought a ton of them. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Darcy. <laughs> uh, next one. So 
this is uh, this is a pet line that we started uh, two years ago uh, at this point. But again, really focusing on the shareability and the power of the internet um, and how popular items uh, have become. You know, they just people don't want to keep it to themselves. They want to they want to be able to you know take funny pictures of their kids and send it to their friends and their pets as well. So. Um, you know, we made a, a clear choice to, you know, try to put put some more of these these types of things in our line. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure you guys are familiar with, uh, you know, the the pet shaming um, movement that's going on. So yeah, I was I was gonna I just recently got two dogs, are about nine months old, and I didn't wasn't familiar with it, and I start watching it on YouTube with my wife. So did is that how this came about, or did you have this out before the pet shaming thing? No, this this was a response to it. Um, okay. But the you know what we what we're doing is you know we put a, a little hashtag on the back of the packaging that uh, invites people to take pictures of their pets, and um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but um, it's probably I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll find it and I can I can text it to you. But the um, the idea is, uh, you know, that uh, you know, your your pets are doing what they're doing, which is, you know, a lot of a lot of bad stuff usually. And you know, this this is a you know a fun gift for a pet owner. Um, and then you know, being able to share you know the trials and tribulations with your pet online is 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 pretty funny. And there's there's been some doozies. There's there was a dog that actually chewed up the 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 plaque, uh, which is made of MDF wood. Um, <laughs> they're they're pretty darn funny. Oh, this is a right. this is a solid wood plaque. Wow. It's okay. it's MDF with uh, yeah with uh, it's laser cut and it's got a you know it's got an integrated oh. uh, base and a write on wipe off pen that comes with it. Oh, so, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, that's cool. That's fun. Yeah, and it's a it's a pet blanket on the right. Obviously. Yeah, that, that, that's that's funny as all hell. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is just a just a quick uh, snapshot. These are these are Instagram. These are customers uh, sharing um, their experiences with our items. Um, we love seeing this. We want to you know expand on it. Um, and uh, you know I think you know we're we're always so busy designing product that we don't spend a ton of time or as much time as we should on on our own marketing. Um, that's something that's that's changing right now. Um, but, uh, you know, this is all just organic, you know, people buying our stuff, having fun with it and sharing it with others. So this is kind of what makes me tick. Uh, and what makes me want to go to work every day is, is, you know, people enjoying what, what we do and, and sharing it with their friends. Can we, can we talk about that real quick? Since you brought it up, you mentioned that you're looking to go move more online and even hired a marketing person to do more online stuff. Can you talk about that quickly? Yeah, uh, you know, it's been something that you know we know was a was a hole in our in our system. Um, you know, we we have very talented you know designers who you know do do it all, and you know it's it's uh, it's just a, a product of not having enough time to really keep keep the you know the pedal on um, you know when when it's needed. Um, so we've we've always been you know a little bit more reactionary than than proactive when it comes to our own marketing. Um, you know, obviously the the situation that we're in right now with you know everybody uh, stores closing down, um, you don't have the opportunity to see any of these products on a store shelf necessarily. So you know we've worked over the years to build up um, you know our image base for Amazon. And online retail and our own website, which you know we I'm kind of embarrassed at at the moment, but that's being changed as well. I, I don't. Th I think your website's nice. I think we'll, we'll oh, take a look at it. All right. It's all right. It, our, the search you, you function know, is terrible, and I don't know. It's, you you it's know what it is. You know what I like about it, Jason. I like the products. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, even if you think it's not completely as navigatable as it should be, the products are so much fun. I don't really notice any navigation flaws if you feel like there are any yeah well th thank you but the the new website will it's on a different platform and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a hundred times better so um, yeah so this um, 
like you know as being uh you know toy designers this is you know kind of clearly in our wheelhouse um this was designed uh, in-house um but you know it's 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 done very well uh and we've, we've ex extended it out to a number of different uh extensions um but it's a it's a game board obviously plate for children and uh you know if a, an interesting byproduct of this item uh, came from, you know, mothers that had uh, uh, children with autism who had um, refused to eat. This one, this one mother sent us this this very impassioned letter um, saying that that this tray has basically solved her son's issues with with eating. He didn't like, you know, whether it be textural or food touching each other. Or, you know, she she was at the point of almost having to put him on a feeding tube. Wow, uh, to uh, to get them to eat, um, and this you know basically solved everything for her. So it wasn't part of the initial design, but it was kind of a a, a nice uh, a nice story. Um, so you know we we've been uh, successful with you know this and and you know the other styles that we've done. But it again it's that having fun with your food, um, you know the the interactivity, you know not uh, you know. Getting getting picky kids to eat their dinner, um, you know, solves a problem. But you're you know, you're having fun while you're doing it. So, and unfortunately, it's it's also spawned a lot of copies on on uh, online. But you know, we we pride ourselves on being the originators of a lot of this stuff. Um, and uh, you know, it's 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 fun to do. This is a, another kids plate. Um, you know that I you know I've been known to eat off myself. So, you know, they're not limited to kids, you know, immature adults can, can enjoy them. Uh, next slide. Um, so this slide is uh, just to emphasize how sometimes the product that we're selling uh, is less of the punchline than the, the, pro than the, the product that it makes. So in this, this instance, it's, you know, it's a muffin, uh, the little muffin um, molds, uh, like four in a, in a pack, and uh, they make little uh, little muffin tops. Uh, the next slide, you know, we, we do very well with our egg molds. The egg molds aren't much to look at when you see them, so you know this is this is the you know the money shot that's on the on the packaging, um, you know, and it's it's. Uh, you know, on on the um, I actually didn't have it on there, but you know, we have photos after photos on our our Instagram and social channels that uh, you know customers doing this uh, themselves and having fun with it. And again, it's it helps parents with finicky eaters, and you know we have a version that can be used for pancakes as well. So um, again, it's it's uh, sometimes it's it's not the product itself; it's 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 the the end result of it. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, sometimes a simple name can uh, can you know take a, a generic concept and, and you know put a put a twist on it. Um, you know you've seen probably baking mats and things that have you know grids and angles and all that. And uh, this one we we originally called it the OCD chef, and we got. A, a ton of crap for it so we we had to change, <laughs> change the name a little bit and, to, and, and call it the obsessive chef but um this has been in the line for a number of years it's done very well it's a quality piece of wood um and it's you know it's it's a pretty simple idea um but it's something that you know with with good execution and nice packaging and, and clever marketing um becomes uh becomes a nice item this is a licensed idea um you know the packaging is beautiful, um, and you know, I, and I do. I will say that you know, I think a, a lot of designers have have said uh, have been very happy with how we take their ideas and how we end up you know producing them, whether it be the quality of the product, the marketing that we do. We don't hide designers' names. Um, you know, we we prominently put it on the packaging and on the website. Um, so it's it's not something that's uh, that's hidden by any means. We want to support the artist um, and uh, and promote them as much as we can. Now, what's the price point on this product? 
This one is this one is north of twenty dollars. This might be twenty five. So, and then this one's to to you know the 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 name is is kind of the the point of this slide. Um, you know, we talk about uh, naming items. Um, the you know although, although we like you know a good pun, we try not to let the name of a you know. We don't start with a name, so to speak. We don't start with a pun and, and try to, you know, build a product around that. So, um, you know, we get a lot of submissions from designers who have just, you know, a wacky name, but the function and the theme don't fit together. I don't, I don't have an example off the top of my head, but we we just we make sure that for the most part you know it does happen where the you know the the, the name is is uh, you know drives the product but we have to be very careful when you when the connection between the function and the and the concept aren't perfectly aligned you take that packaging away and somebody doesn't remember what the name was if if all those things aren't working together. Um, mm -hmm. it'd be, confusing for a consumer so like like a bad name for this would be the the engineering chef or something it's just not doesn't cross come across the same as the obsessive chef sure. yeah, yeah yeah um yeah yeah here's a here's a version where you know the name is uh it's it's clearly you know makes sense um you know and there's a there's a little fun reveal in the packaging you know tied in with van gogh is is uh you know, it's pretty clever, but we we treat the name as kind of icing on the cake. Um, this one is a little a little bit more ingrained in in the product itself. But um, you know, for instance, we did a um, an ice mold that's called uh, Frozen Smiles, and it's a it's an ice mold that makes dentures basically. So the theme or the concept of you know soaking your dentures at night. Uh, or putting an ice cube in your glass is, you know, it's it's kind of a, a a clear correlation, and then you know you call it frozen smiles, and that's you know that's that's the connection. So all three things are kind of working in tandem, if that makes sense. Hmm. Um, okay, so this is, a, this is an example of a, a product that you know we have we have very talented graphic designers that work in the studio. We had uh, an idea to do a, a glass. It was basically a, a drinking glass uh, that you would make um, hangover uh, cocktails. And uh, come to find out that the minimum orders for this type of machine-made glass were just through the roof. So we we couldn't we couldn't you know justify doing one style. We ended up you know coming out with. Uh, I think five or six different versions. And um, these are all, this one is, uh, this is the, the hangover cocktail, but we have one for vodka, we have one for gin and tequila and rum. And uh, the idea is that you buy this glass for $10 and you buy a bottle of booze uh, that correlates with the, you know, the, the glass that you bought. And it's a, it's a nice gift. And all the measurements are, uh, you know, are, are were extensively tested. We, we we drank quite a few of these uh, over the months of development. But the the logos are are gorgeous, and uh, it was a it was a fun project for our designer. And um, you know, it's something that we hadn't um, we hadn't necessarily uh, jumped into. We always thought that you know decorated product was you know didn't follow the Fred theme, where you know it needed to have that you know, that iconic kicker. And uh, so we gave this a shot and uh, it's done very well for us. One thing I'm noticing a little detail in the packaging is in three, um, three languages. Can you talk about your distribution? Yes. Um, so, you know, years ago, uh, in, in 2012, we were acquired by Lifetime Brands, which I, you guys have, have had some interaction with uh, more on the functional uh, product side. Um, we have distribution in, uh, in the UK, Europe, Japan, Australia, um, and uh, you know, we, Mexico, South America. 
Um, so we were asked um, you know, a few years back to redo our packaging uh, actually in six languages. So uh, in some cases you'll see um, you know, three, two, three language on the front, and then we, you know, we have to extend it out into the back, uh, which is a little unfortunate. Our early packaging, we had some really funny um, copy on the on the packages that um, unfortunately don't translate. You know, you can't you can't really get the joke across uh, in, in in outside of English. So we had to scrap that, and you know, you'll find more of it on our website. Um, but the packaging we had to strip down so we could translate everything out and as you know you know some of the languages uh they could be pretty lengthy so uh you know it's, it's an unfortunate process to to have to do that because it was such a big part of our our early packaging but you know it obviously gets uh gets it in front of uh more eyeballs which is good you got incredible distribution so that's it's amazing yeah it's done pretty well um, some more examples of our glassware, which you know, again have you know these are these are shelf bought you know decanters that we put our our little twist on, and you know there are fun little quips in there that you know the, your your uh, you know little little surprises in in the copy, and um, you know it's it's real gold decals that are applied to all these things, so they're the quality uh, decanters and um, you know, I think, you know, when you look at it, it wasn't a traditional Fred product. And we had, we had some customers and some sales reps asking us, you know, how is this a Fred product? And, and I said, you know, this is, this is something we're giving a shot. Uh, we're, we're shooting uh, into the, into the wind here and seeing if there's uh, if there's interest, but it, you know, it's, it has become something that is, um, you know, part of the line, part of, uh, part of something that we, you know, we feel comfortable with and we can do uh, we can do nice graphics that uh, you know definitely speak in the Fred language as our mugs these are uh, you know we, we we'll throw a few of them into the line every season um, not something that we normally can take outside submissions on or you know our inside our in-house studio is doing all of these um, you know once in a while somebody will come up with with something that we can uh, we can throw in a mug, but for the most part, these aren't you know we don't take submissions for art. Um, so, but these are these are things that you know we we open a mold for the mug, um, and uh, you know these things just they just sell, and uh, mm. you know we can have uh, we can have fun with them. We can we can do some that are a little more dirty that uh, you know the, the the smaller independent shops that we. We truly love to support. Um, we'll take on, and you know, the bigger guys can can have their way with with some of the others. But uh, yeah, that's this is all right. So we've we've made it through kind of what the you know the the Fred um, you know the, the criteria of of all our items. This these are actually just released now. So due to you know, obviously the, the the situation we're in. And the popularity of uh, jigsaw puzzles, we said, "Hey, we're, we're going to give it a go." This is um, a collaboration that we've done with 14 different artists. Um, I'm sorry, 12 different artists, 14 different puzzles, and um, they're 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 pretty they're pretty nicely done. We uh, we worked hard to um, you know kind of curate a, a series that you know if if anybody is is a is a puzzle doer um you know there's certain criteria that that you know people care about make sure that they're they're solvable these are you know two millimeters thick which is uh you know probably one of the, the highest uh of of the you know puzzle thicknesses quality is super um the uh they're they're treated with um anti-glare coating um and uh and they're just they're just nicely done they're packaged very well so we literally released these um, this week, and uh, these are just some screenshots of, uh, of our latest brochure. So this is one, and uh, you can go to the next one. Puzzles are hot right now, aren't they? They are very hot, yeah. So here's just you know the rest of the series. Um, you know we got one in the top left corner, which is uh, you know 
don't know if anybody knows uh, who Wayne White is, but he was one of the art directors for Pee Wee's Playhouse, and uh, he's got a pretty pretty nice career now as a as a fine artist. And uh, he takes these old uh, these old paintings and, and does uh, all kinds of different type treatments through them. And um, so this was a lot of fun to do. Um, we we kind of rushed uh, to get uh, to get it out in time. Probably going to be hitting stores uh, in uh, you know probably mid to late September. Um, all the artists uh, have uh, the ability to promote these on their own sites, and it's going to be a true collaboration with them. Um, and uh, you know, you should, should probably be seeing uh, seeing a lot of them yeah. around. Let's let's talk about that. So, I mean, maybe the puzzles have a certain you said in stores. So. Yes. Can you talk about what types of stores, what types of catalogs, what, where, where your website, where do people find um, Fred products? We sell to, like I said, the the mom and pop stores, the small independents uh, have, you know, have been our bread and butter, you know, since day one. Um, we sell to Target. We sell our Amazon uh, has is probably our biggest customer right now. Uh, Kohl's. And um, we, uh, you know, a, a, a bunch of others. It's, but it's, it's, um, it's a strange time. Obviously, uh, a lot of our smaller customers are, are struggling right now to even keep their doors open. Um, so, you know, that's where the the need to kind of move to a an online, um, you know, an online system where we could potentially take. Uh, you know, wholesale orders online, uh, you know, bolster our direct to consumer website. <clears throat> it's, it's literally, you know, turning everything on its head that we once knew and, uh, you know, trying uh, to just, you know, learn, learn from, you know, where we're at and, and where we can grow. And, uh, you know, we, we, we know we have, you know, a, a, a pretty broad following, um, but you know those those customers like I don't know if you've heard Sir Latab was a customer and and they they filed for Chapter 11 and you know a handful of others so those mid tier uh, mall based stores that you know were were customers of ours you know we're just watching very closely to see you know how they weather the storm it's um, it's a little scary to be honest but with it, you but it's also the part that's exciting is it sounds like you're looking to get more on the social media and people posting and having fun with your products because they're fun products. I mean, they're just, they're the type of products people love to take a picture with, which you can't say that about many products. So I think there's a lot of opportunity if you guys haven't pushed hard in that area before. It sounds like we you guys have. have been very focused on creating great products and they, the little stores, they just kind of, they just kind of sold because people saw the product, got it and wanted to buy it. But yep. Yeah. So yeah, we're with the um, you know with the move to more of a digital you know system, uh, it's uh, it's forced you know especially during you know trade show season everything's everything's virtual and we have to uh, make sure that we're doing uh, doing everything to you know tell the story of a product through videos and, and such. So um, you know when asked uh, you know what customers are you know comfortable buying during this kind of scary time. Uh, they they told us that they were they would be much more comfortable buying items that were tried and true in their stores. Um, you know, it wasn't a time to start shaking things up and uh, you know throwing new categories at them. Um, obviously, the you know people staying home and baking uh, and cooking more than ever <clears throat> has forced us to. Bring back some classic items like the cake witch, which is a, also a licensed idea, um, which makes a giant, you know, peanut butter and jelly looking cake. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, so those things that you know we we knew um, were timely, uh, and you know, the, again, those those f first season, you know, of, of the cooking utensils are now back in style, and they're you know they're doing better than ever on Amazon. Because you know the the more novelty stuff uh, isn't necessary, so to speak. So you know those things that translate to 
uh, functional and have a little bit of fun built in are, are still doing extremely well for us. Mm. New category in the bottom right are you know some some totable shoppers, um, bag clips, uh, which we've uh, started a few seasons ago, uh, doing very well for us. And uh, next next slide is uh, some fun sponges. Hmm. Sponges are you know kind of always known as a commodity item, and we thought that we could do some fun art that are. Um, you know, a little bit more interactive in terms of like the the cats and the dogs that you know they sit on the, the edge of your your sink and um, you know you're you're not uh, not ashamed to have them out. The birds uh, actually come with a suction cup perch that you can stick inside the uh, you know the, the inside of your sink, uh, and they all all the birds grab onto uh, the perch. Um, and you know, it's just it's a it's a fun impulse, low cost item that um, you know. Sponges are ugly. Sponges are just <laughs> ugly, and then these are yeah. fun. Now, now, so with something like this, did you are you kind of creating this category? Do you observe other people who are doing fun things with sponges for a long time? I'm sure, somebody's done something with sponges. I haven't been paying attention to that category, but um, or or do you sometimes create these categories and then other people knock you off? Like, what's the uh, unfortunately, it happens more uh, that way. Um, mm. You know, I won't, I won't be. You know, we 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 do our best to to be the innovators. Um, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of overlap in the market, um, and uh, you know, we do pride ourselves on on. You know, we we do look and see what's out there, but not to the extent that that that's what drives uh, you know the creative process. Um, that we do more look for trends in the market. Um, you know, obviously with people staying home and needing to clean more, it was a it was a category that we said, hey, let's let's put our heads on this for you know a week and see what we can come up with. Um, the perch is actually a, a, a licensed design. Um, so you know, it's a combination, and sometimes these ideas sit in our 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 folders for months and years and you know they, they don't they don't come back out until it's 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 ready for them um so you know i i think uh i think that there's you know there's obviously a time and a place for for every idea and uh you know anybody that that has submitted an idea and i'm going to apologize right now it just there's there's a lot of um there's a, there's a, a big backlog on my my end to respond to them but um you know we we do take uh, take the process uh, very seriously, and we like to uh, we like to coordinate with with designers as much as we can. Well, what I really like about your website, you know, you page down to the bottom here. It says, "Would you like to design for Fred?" Mm -hmm. And you 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 spent some time to write up what you guys are looking for, how to submit, and I, I find it to be very friendly compared to other websites. Um, so I think that's great. Yeah, I mean, our our line relies on ideas, um, and uh, you know, and I think that we've um, made it a point to support you know this this process. Um, you know, sometimes to the to the detriment of my personal time, but you know, it's it's something that you know I'm I'm invested in. Um, you know, I'd like to make sure that you know we. Um, you know, we we create a system where it's it's easy uh, for designers to submit. Um, and, but I, I do think that there's at this point there's a there's a a glut of of designs that are coming my way that I just haven't haven't been able to catch up with. But yeah, but let's talk about your personal time because this isn't just going to our Invent Right students. This is we're doing this series during this crisis, and we've been doing a webinar every week with different companies and people need to be um, take the time and be professional if they're going to submit products to you so um, we take a look let's because you and i talk, talked about we were going to do this we didn't get a chance to do this now they've got a very good picture of the type of product you do by all those slides you showed they're, they're functional and fun right that's the way i would explain it i when i was talking to you the other day i said functional novelties and you're like Andrew, I, I try to avoid the word 
novelty because that usually means cheap. And I don't think anything that I saw looked cheap. That wasn't, you You had a whole page in your slide presentation is showing like cheap novelty stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, what I would say, I'm going to tell you my take on it and then you tell me if I'm right. But I think anything that's functional, like the, the, there were drumsticks, but they were, um, they were stirring implements for when you're cooking, you know? Um, I, if if that doesn't explain what that one product what was it mix sticks right here, right? Yeah, that's the type. That's what we're looking for here for the most part. What what other advice do you have to give so people can? What I'm trying to get to guys here is, don't go. Oh, I got a new bicycle rack. I'll, I'll, you know that Jason guy seems so friendly. I'm gonna send that in to him. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not please, what they do. Please don't. Yeah, um, you know and. Yeah, and that's it's kind of the reason for for doing this uh, is you know to support and and hone hone the ideas. So you know there is a um, you know you might not hit the the target uh, every time, but at least you're hitting the wall and you're getting close. Um, so yeah, we don't you know I, I would urge everybody who's you know submitting to really pay attention to whoever's website, uh, whoever's line you're you're submitting to, make sure that you're you're on target. Um, you know, we, I've, I've been forced to use, you know, some canned responses over, over the years that kind of tell, tell the same story to a lot of different people. Um, you know, obviously the criteria that I've kind of gone through, um, there's a lot of reason that we don't take on items. You know, it's, you know, the gift, the giftability is probably the, the number one, um, criteria that, that, you know, makes all of these, that underlies all of these items uh, is something that, you know, you could feel like you would, could give it to somebody or feel good about receiving it. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the child seats and the lawn sprinklers and all of those things that, you know, come my way, um, you know, I will try to respond to those, but I'd rather they didn't, <laughs> they didn't come through. Um, and, so, but you know, let, let's let's define it. So, if you must have some products in here that aren't functional, but almost all of them are functional. So, if you have a novelty that's a gag gift and it's not functional, it's not something people would use either once in a while or daily. That I, I'm trying to define it myself. Um, that you shouldn't be submitting that to Fred. Was that accurate, Jason? We do everything, you know, you know, you could even call, I mean, we do pencil erasers, which are, you know, probably they're functional, but they're probably the least functional of, of things that we do. Um, but yeah, everything has to have that, you know, that underlying um, theme of, uh, you know, just being useful in some way. And, and um, I can't think of anything that's not. Okay. Well, there you go. So. Yeah. But the, the core lesson here, everyone, is that when you're going to submit to a company, you have to be respectful. You have to look at their product line. You have to take the time. You should go through every page on Fred's site before you consider submitting anything to them. And then, you know, and if you're if you're paying attention, you'd notice that all these things have functionality. If you're not paying attention, you're like, oh, wait a minute. It's a company that's open to ideas. I'll just send them whatever idea I have. Well, if it doesn't fit into their product line, don't send it to them. Yeah. And I, I'm assuming. Go ahead. Well, we've been known to, you know, it, it can be a raw idea. Um, you know, we've been known to kind of take seeds of ideas that aren't fully flushed out, and you know, be able to see something in them and and you know, develop them further. So, um, you know, I I don't. Uh, I think if 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 there's something that's that you know maybe on the fence, um, you know, I don't want to dis dismiss anything. But if it's if it's clearly doesn't fit those criteria, then yeah, I'd say you know, maybe there's somebody else out there that uh, that is, could be more responsive to them. Well, let's sure. talk about that, and it shows that on your submission page at the bottom. It's the bottom of their website. Would you like to design for Fred? But so th you'd be okay with the sketch with a little marketing copy. It seems like you are okay with a little less than like lifetime would be okay with. They'd want a more slightly more professional, you know, picture of the product or at least a 3d rendering where people yes. could get away with a sketch with you because, and that would be okay. For sure. 
Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we do. We're, we're with our new website. We're going to have a hopefully have a portal where you know there will be a disclaimer that pops up, and you go through the criteria and make sure that you know you are hitting all those, checking all those boxes. And you know, we ask that that designers have uh, you know the, their name and the date on every image that they submit. Just it's it's extremely hard to keep track of this stuff. And uh, you know, with everyone trying to play in the same vein, there's there's obviously overlap. Um, we've been known to re, you know put say you know a designer came to us you know ten years ago with an idea. It probably wasn't the right time, and we've put it in a folder and you know forgotten about it. And then somebody else comes uh, years later and submits a very similar idea. Um, we will hear from both of those designers very quickly. So um, we try to make sure that we keep track of things. My my brain is not as strong as it used to be, so I don't uh, I don't have the mental capacity to, to hold on to all these things. So we need to we need to kind of create systems with tagging and, and dating. So it helps immensely if the name and the date of submission is, is on every image that get, that gets sent. Well, you, it looks like you have somebody that is submitting to you. Mac uh, wrote, Jason has helped me understand if they have 12 versions of a product, they often don't need the 13th one. That was very helpful for me, Mac wrote. Apparently he's a designer that's submitting to you. Yeah, uh, so yeah, so if you like, I guess if you had 12 erasers, or well, you got all these clips, maybe you don't want another one. Is, is, that, is that true, or would you want another version? Like you got the tortilla bag clip, the potato clip that's an actual clip. That's funny. Yeah. For um, the most part, if we're di diving into a category, you know, we're doing our homework, and, and, you know, it is a numbers game where you're, you know, connecting you know the your x-axis and y-axis and you're you know you're coming up with the the best possible solutions for these things um so you know for the most part um you know we've we've covered those bases but you know we're not you know we're not we don't have all the answers for sure and uh you know i i i do think you know in terms of category like like phone stands you know we don't have you know, there's 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 room for you know extensions for sure. Um, okay. So you know, there, we we work in a lot of different categories, um, which is good and bad because you know we just have to keep feeding them every once in a while to keep everybody interested. Um, but there's a lot here for for designers to dig into, and you know whether or not we have whether that's the, the right time of year for it or um, you know we don't have a you know supporting uh, line port at the, at the moment uh, if it's a good idea we will find space for it um, and you know as you can see the stuff it's not brain surgery you know this, the, these are the ideas that it's that it's that you know why the hell didn't I think of that kind of thing um, and um, we know that we can't come up with all the good ones so we we hope that uh, well, you know, would you say with these types of products that inventors would typically need to submit a higher volume of ideas before they get one that you might be interested in than with other categories. Um, so that's I think true. it all depends. Um, you know, we've had designers who, uh, you know, I, I call them designers, but, you know, the housewives and, you know, guys who, um, you know, you know, have a, another day job and they just love thinking about this kind of crap. So, you know, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't dismiss, uh, you know, anybody, um, you know, that comes, comes through, you know, I think it's, it, it, it could be a, it could be the first email that comes through and it's just a brilliant idea. We've had, uh, you know, one of the, one of those chip clips was designed by a student in, uh, uh at college. So, um, you know, you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to have a, an extensive portfolio. Um, you know, the ideas come from anywhere. And, you know, I just do ask that, you know, a little bit of homework is done to make sure that it doesn't already exist. Um, you know, we can't, uh, we can't license ideas that aren't truly new and original. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're fair, we're honest, and, you know, we love the process. So, I think so it's, Jeff, Jeff is asking, are patents important? 
How do you feel about patents? No, we, um, if it's something that, that already has a patent uh, and, and, and we're interested in it, great. Um, we will tend to, if it's, if it's something that, you know, can and will be copied, um, which, you know, most of our stuff is copied, unfortunately. Um, but, um, you know, we will take the, you know, carry the expense of patenting or, or copywriting, whatever uh, the item is, if it's something that can be protected, but it's not a prerequisite to, uh, to submitting to us. Hmm. Some companies it is, like Lifetime, I think, requires it, um, but we don't. You, you, is it just me or you have a lot of categories and a lot of SKUs? I mean, uh, how many, I, maybe, do you know how many SKUs you have? Uh, it seems like you have a lot. Probably 300 at the moment. We've wow. had more. Um, and, you know, every season, which, you know, the, the term season has, has been a little bit gray this, this year because of you know, COVID. But, um, you know, usually we, we put out 30 to 40 items uh, every, you know, f every fall and spring. Um, and, uh, you know, things, things get discontinued, uh, for slow or low sales. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we just keep trying to fill it with, with original products, but, um, you know, we, we're not a company that relies on, on shelf bought goods. Uh, even if it is, you know, the, the, the bones of something, you know, maybe, maybe, um, sourced, um, you know, we're putting our own little spin on it, but for the most part, you know, we, we like to, you know, partner with vendors who have clever products, uh, and, uh, but we don't rely on that. And, you know, we, we are, are wholly self-reliant, you know, with our own in-house studio and the help of outside design. Um, you know, this is, this is who we started out to be and who we continue to, you know, we still follow the same rules that we made early on. So would, would it be safe to say that you guys are like the big, the big boy on the block in this kind of, yeah. in this area? I mean, you, you're backed by a very large mother, huge mother company. And then... Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's the nice part of, of having a, a parent company with deep pockets. Um, you know, we can open molds, uh, you know, at, at will. Um, you know, we're not, uh, I think, you know, we, we've, Lifetime has never told us what to design or how to design it. And they leave us alone to do, do our thing, which is great. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're conscious of what we do, um, and how we spend Lifetime's money. Um, and, uh, you know, never had, had any issues with it. Um, you know, but it's, it's something that it's because we, we've been doing it for, for so long. Um, you know, you have that gut instinct, whether, you know, something's going to, going to take off or not. Um, usually we're right. Sometimes we're not, sometimes we're surprised. Um, but for the most part, you know, we've, we've found a, a formula that works. Um, yeah. but you know, there's, there's, there's other guys out there doing, doing some good stuff. And, you know, we're just trying to keep, uh, keep our guardrails up and make sure that we're, you know, we're staying original and, and, you know, people, people can recognize a Fred product when they see it. Um, you know, we, we've, we've spawned a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, let's say copy brands, but, um, we've inspired some other brands. We'll, you know, we could, we could admit it. And, um, you know, I think that we continue to do what we do and, and hopefully we do it better. So, yeah, I, I think your products have tremendous viral social media potential and, uh, we, we could use just some fun people posting fun products like this on social media rather than all the other garbage that people post on social media these days, these days oh my God, sure. people yeah. people could use a laugh really yeah. um and with that said you know with the current environment just one last question then we'll let you go because we're about nine minutes over um matt wrote and then kim wrote a related question matt wrote is fred um looking for specific product categories now based on the current situation, such as stay at home. And then Kim ex asked a similar question right below him. Are they doing masks? So what, what, um, any, any tips on new stuff you guys are looking for? You mentioned you, you guys are doing puzzles, but people probably aren't going to submit a puzzle, but, yeah. um, what, what are you, any, any tips there for stuff that people could submit to you? That's really current. Well, I think more than ever, um, it is that that functional 
you know, I think we're, we're making sure that that things that we're we're doing um, have that secondary function. They can be, you know, they can be fun, they can be novel, um, but I think that, like I said, the those those kitchen gadgets and those things that are, um, you know, they're timely right now because you know everybody's everybody's home and and, and doing it. So these are these are things that you know they've been steady burners, slow burners in the line. But they're you know they're popping up again. Um, so I would say uh, we are not doing uh, masks because it's just you know wh where can you carve out a, a you know a, a space for yourself in such a crowded uh, crowded space. But um, you know we've got so many categories. Obviously pet items are doing very well now because um, of you know everybody adopting you know, dogs and cats. Um, so you know. Literally, it is it is an open field, uh, you know. With you know, if you look at the categories that we have, um, you know, there's uh, there's got to be room in there for for some smart ideas. Um, you know, back to school stuff, obviously, probably something you want to stay away from right now because um, we right. don't know for back to school. So it's you know, it's a little common sense, but it's uh, you know, these these are things that. You know, we hope that uh, you know people are locked in their houses or offices, home offices. Um, you know, they 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 can have a have a laugh or you know something that that you know they don't mind looking at uh, day in and day out, um, make their their space a little bit more uh, appealing. Um, it's you know it's kind of a non-answer, but it's it's uh, you know it's it's pretty wide open. Well, really looking forward to your new website. I mean, I think your current site's good. Uh, I think when you click on some of these, like it's a little bit smaller than I want it to be, but yeah. the products are so much fun. I don't even notice, but we really are looking forward to the new site. And you guys for now, um, please do not even consider submitting to them before looking at every page on their website and all their products and then ask yourself, does this fit in with what they're doing? And if it does submit, if it doesn't, don't submit, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it's just that just that simple. So Jason, thank you so much for coming on, man. Um, really fun, just a fun presentation, a fun company, fun products. I'm a little envious of your job. You got a, you got a great job, man. It's um, pretty good. I, uh, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoy getting up every morning. You know, I'm, I'm, I get to work out of my, my home office these days, so. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I got a great team, you know, I'll admit it. it's, it's, uh, we've, we've built a, a nice, um, a nice brand over the years and it's, it's a combination of just hard work and, and good people and we like what we do. So how many uh, years has that been? How many years have you, you've been doing Fred? Uh, Fred is 2004, uh, 16 years is, is the Fred oh, my brand. God. Yeah. You, and you've and, been, uh, you've been there for 16. I've been there for 24 years. 24. And, uh, oh, because you, yeah, you did the whole history. Wow. And then the Fred, yeah. So this is you, uh, man. This is you. Yeah. This is so, like. You know, I was a I was a designer turned art director turned division president. So you know, it's um, it's uh, you know, I lack uh, what I what I lack in in uh, business skills. I make up in in you know design. So. It's uh, it works, and we still have the same bones, uh, you know, from day one. And you know, I think, um, you know, we've we've got a, a real talented group, and uh, we like uh, we like collaborating, and and uh, hope hopefully something comes of this. You make your life bringing a smile to people's faces. But that's you know that that gets me through. I, I try to justify it, but the you know the uh, it's it's all about having having fun and. You know, it is work, but it's, uh, you know, it could be worse for sure. So yeah, over 300 SKUs, you got a lot of work, but but thank you so much, Jason. I want to remind okay. everybody to take care, keep inventing, and we'll catch up with you guys next time. See ya. Appreciate it. Take care.